Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So it's been a while since I made a video, but I wanted to get this one out for quite some time. So back in January, I ordered a live edge walnut slab, which I turned into a little end table for my significant other. It was intended to be for her birthday, which is end of February. Uh, I got a little delayed, a little jammed up, um, and did not get an opportunity to make it as quickly as I wanted, but I got it uh, a week or two late. And then, if you all have been watching the videos, had a little computer issue, so I haven't been able to produce this video. It's all okay. So here's the video. I am going to show you the design in Fusion 360 very quickly, cut over to the montage, show you the build, and then wrap it up. That simple. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. What you see in front of you is the design. It is pretty straightforward. You have the top and two legs. The only, I wanna say difficult part, if you wanna look at it that way, is the taper to the legs. And I will rotate here and show it to you. Uh, so I have what was intended to be an eight degree taper on legs coming down. And I will switch into the sketch of the legs here to show you what changed and I will talk about how I had to adjust as I was making it. Okay, so right here is the, the sketch of the leg itself. The leg is two inches wide and one inch thick. And I'll talk about the thickness here in just a minute, but uh, I intended it to be eight inches at, uh, on the angle there. It ended up being, because of the miter saw in particular, I adjusted the miter saw and the little uh, angle adjustment is not terribly accurate for anything other than you know 45 and 90. Uh, I learned this the hard way and I didn't have really any way to measure the angle precisely as it was lined up. So it ended up being roughly around 7.2. So I originally designed this at eight and I got my measurements here on the bottom. And then when I put the put it all together, I, I did a two by four dry cut, if you will. I cut everything out of two by fours rather than the hardwood that I was making the base out of. And uh, I realized that the, the these values, these links were not adding up appropriately. Uh, they weren't what they were supposed to be, so I came back to Fusion and I adjusted this angle until I got what I was getting in the garage. And ultimately, the lesson learned here is very simple. You can cut your sides and your top to length at the angle and then just simply measure the bottom um, and sneak up on it. Uh, you don't have to take, and I would recommend not taking these numbers as gospel, because even I did this two or three times as it turns out, uh, and I never really quite got these numbers. In fact, I never got these numbers. I got close, I didn't get close enough. It was uh, well outside the the noticeable range, if you if you want to look at it that way. Um, had I just used these numbers, it would not have it would not have turned out well. But nevertheless, uh, that's the lesson learned in the design versus the making. It's it, it's okay. It's just a lesson learned, and you just need to know that. So again, uh, I'm gonna switch over here now to the video of actually making it, the unboxing of the of the slab, and the cutting of most of the things. I didn't get. Uh, it turns out any video of making the legs, uh, of cutting it and lining it up on the miter saw, I don't know if that's because of the computer issues I was having or if uh, I just didn't video it. Uh, it might be a combination of both. It doesn't really matter, but you'll see how it all goes together. And then I had a little issue finishing it, but I was able to fix that. It worked out pretty well. So let's cut over to the montage.
It is worth noting here that I did fill the cracks and voids with resin to stop them from further cracking, but also just fill them in and cover them up. And so what I'm doing here is actually scraping the tape off of the slab itself where I had taped the dammed up the cracks for the for the resin board. So I chose here to seal the walnut. Uh, it is a little bit porous, so by sealing it in advance, it allows it to take the finish a little bit better and, and just reduces the amount of sanding you have to do overall. So in this shot, I'm actually putting the first coat of polyurethane on. I got way too aggressive with the polyurethane here and had a lot of runs. So I had to do a lot of extra sanding before I put the second and third coats on. So here you can get a pretty good view of one of the big runs that I had on top. This is the most significant one and the one that was the most difficult to remove. And you'll see in the next clip that I had to do quite a lot of sanding on it and get pretty aggressive. But overall the finish turned out pretty well for the very first coat. And again I applied two more coats to make it super smooth. So here I am sanding the top to get the run out. I started out with 120 grit, but that just was not aggressive enough to get that big run out. So I switched over to 80 grit to really smooth it down. It was a little aggressive, but the second and third coats did well of uh, smoothing it out.
Okay, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was an amazing build. It was a lesson learning experience for me. I think if I do the next one, I'm going to do a couple things different, but I still think it turned out very well. The live edge is beautiful. That uh, curly uh, cherry that I used for the legs turned out just wonderfully. And I'm just, uh, I'm happy with the outcome. Uh, that's all I can say. All right, so thank you so much for getting this far. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video. Ring the bell. Very important these days to ring the bell. And that's it. We'll wrap this one up. Don't forget to be inspired. Thank you for making it this far.